Good day chaps. So today's video will cover the space plated Conqueror trials done in the 1950s to test out various guns including the 183mm Hesch weapons and see how they might affect tanks of the future. Also during this video I'll just be referring to the vehicle as a Conqueror as the name Super Conqueror while popular was never ever used and was made up by World of Tanks and a forum user and later picked up by model companies and others. But in reality, it never actually had an interesting or remotely exciting name. Now, some of these early tests took place in the first half of the 50s. Very early tests saw vehicles like the original Centurion be destroyed in 1950, while later firing trials used these against three Centurion Mark III tanks in April 1955. The purpose of these trials was to assess the effectiveness of several weapons including 20 pounder guns, the American 90mm guns, 106mm recoilless rifles, 120mm guns. The data would be gathered from these vehicles to be used in any future tank studies. The end results were somewhat in line with predictions from the time, that rounds under 120mm had a lower chance to result in major damage and that the 183mm round didn't care too much for the burster plates, and even on a non-scabbing hit, often left the target unable to operate. On the 9th of November 1955, more tests were undertaken at the FVRDE Chertsey site by the Research Trials Group. This time they used an FV201 Conqueror tank, 40BA77, fitted with 14mm burster plates on the upper glassy plate, and the hull reinforced with five strips of 20mm applique armour to take it to 150mm thick line of sight. The burster plates were located 6 inches from the hull and between 4 to 11 inches from the turret armour, each supported by closely packed steel tubes. Now while it's been said that these tests were to establish the effectiveness of burster plates, this really wasn't the case. Rather, the aim, as said, was to evaluate how the potential weapons would affect future heavy tanks. The weapons to be used in this particular trial included three shots from the FV4005 183mm Stage 2 system with 37 pounds of high explosive filler, as well as some new experimental 6.5 inch AVRE rounds designed to imitate the proposed 160mm gun from the ongoing contentious project, along with some conventional AVRE rounds. The 183mm rounds were fired at the front glassy, left hand turret cheek and right side suspension. Each round was only fired from 200 yards to ensure that key areas were struck, the rounds having their charge modified to strike at the equivalence of 1000 yards and also one suspects due to the very limited numbers of these vehicles made, rounds were probably quite expensive to produce and therefore missed shots would have been costly. The 183mm shell was considered to be very effective as a tank killing round and a single hit to most areas would result in a kill. Of note was that a front area, even if hit and prevented from scabbing, would often result in a kill through mechanical jamming and failure via structural distortions and shock. To prevent this round scabbing, a spaced armour distance of at least 6 inches was required and a plate no less than 12mm thick on top of that. If either of these were less, then the kinetic energy of the round was able to compress the burster plate and transmit the shock through the armour. The same could not be said for anti-tank guided missiles which contained similar levels of high explosive but a lower velocity while smaller rounds could be easily protected with thinner plates and less distance between the hull. The 183mm hitting the front glassy with 6 inches of spaced array blew off the front plates, buckling one of the 20mm applique plates and fracturing the rest. The blast tore off the left track guard, dislodged the lower array and sheared off a towing eye. The upper and lower nose plate was cracked along its weld, as was the top plate to the glassy. The blast also damaged the sheath protecting the gun with an 8 by 12 inch hole. Internally the driver's scopes were shattered and the turret ring was temporarily jammed. Many modules were damaged 
jarred or missing parts, and the driver's controls were broken, but he himself would have survived. The end result was that this was a mobility kill. The second 183mm shot, aimed at the left turret cheek, was more effective, as the space distance was too thin for this round, and the Hesh was able to detonate on the turret cheek, where the line of sight armour was around 7 inches thick, leaving a 25 by 24 inch dent and cracking the turret armour below the impact. Some 18 pounds of spool were found inside the turret, and the optics, elevating gear, gun mountings and trunnions were all broken, as was the commander's machine gun. However, once again the crew dummies and the rangefinder were found to be intact. Outside, the stowage boxes on the side were torn to shreds, while the entire burster plate had been removed. The track guards are damaged, and the topmost bolts holding the turret roof hatch have sprung. But overall the crew would have survived, and this was counted as a firepower kill. The last 183mm round was fired at the suspension along the skirting plate. The round struck on target and tore the suspension apart. The tracks are lifted up and snarled back, and at least two road wheels have been sheared off and their mounting points collapsed, while others all show signs of buckling and distortion. Stowage bins and so forth have simply been deleted from along the sides. Inside the vehicle, the bulkheads were split and fuel tanks were ruptured from the shockwave, and most of its subsystems were inoperable, while the turret motor is broken, however the crew would have survived again. But the tank itself was non-functional, and recorded as a mobility kill, with firepower reduced to manual handling only. The last two tests in this trial were to test out some new AVRE rounds. The first was quite interesting. They were fired from an AVRE to simulate a possible new 160mm Hesch gun for Project Contentious, using a pair of 6.5 inch rounds with 30 pounds of high explosive filler. Despite having similar levels of filler, this round came in a lot lighter than the 183mm round, as it had nowhere near the same kinetic energy via muzzle velocity of its bigger cousin. The first round struck the middle left suspension track guard, but did very little damage. The guard was blown away, and some superficial damage to one wheel, pitting and scrapes, but otherwise no significant damage. The second experimental round was very much the same. This time, only one wheel was damaged and some more pitting and dents, but otherwise the vehicle was found to have been still mobile. These results surprised most involved, but no damage had been done, and it was put down to possibly faulty rounds with fuse problems. To confound this a bit more, the regular AVRE rounds with 26 pounds of filler were fired next. These worked somewhat better, the tracks being severed and the road wheels were damaged, large amounts of pitting and twisting to the lower hull and suspension points, while a large 17 inch crack was found in the hull. Later on a full strip down had at least two pages of minor damage listed, from loose wires, cracked parts, missing bolts etc all of which would have taken a significant repair time. However, from a combat perspective, it was a mobility kill, and only just. Well guys, that's the end of this test. There's plenty more occasions when these plated centurions and conquerors undergo a variety of weapons and experiments. And if this video does well, I can go through those. Overall, the Big Hesh rounds more or less performed as expected. And while it did result in kills, Frankly, smaller, better weapons would come along that could do the job just as easily from a longer range at a fraction of the cost and size. But until then, toodle pip.